Today we are staying in a ryokan, a traditional Japanese inn that has been open for more than 300 years. This hot spring hotel is located in the mountainous Gunma prefecture and was used as a model for the movie Spirited Away. It's roughly 100 miles northwest of Tokyo, so might be a trek for some visitors, but the charming neighborhood is filled with soul-soothing greenery and precious details. Sekizenkan offers indoor and scenic outdoor bathing, and the meals are artfully prepared. Before continuing, thanks to Boksu for sponsoring this video. Boksu delivers authentic Japanese snack boxes right to your door. Japan has four distinct seasons, so it might be helpful to know that this video was filmed in July. For those who arrive by car, there's free private parking on site. As for us, we took the train and bus and arrived last night. We first came across Sekizenkan's red bridge, which leads to their oldest building. Crossing the bridge, soak in the sounds of the Arayu River. At the entrance of the main building, there's a bathhouse available for guests who do not stay overnight. Hot spring water bubbles up from the riverbed. After checking in, we hauled our luggage upstairs. To the immediate left, there are some rooms, but we are heading to the second building called Sanso. These two buildings are connected by a tunnel. Every footstep echoes, as wooden panels may suddenly squeak. Feels like a mysterious adventure. Some might even find it a little creepy and mystical. We eventually reach a single elevator. As we step in, a woven chair awaits in a corner. Studying the map with stacked floors might get confusing real fast. At the same time, it's fun to get lost and figure out how things connect. There are eight floors spanning across three buildings, each constructed in a different era. Is it just me or does this floor look kind of like an escape room? And I'm searching for clues on how to get to our room. Here's an entrance to a private bathhouse. I'll give you a detailed tour of it in just a bit. We made it to our room. That's the entrance. And then, okay, so it's been, it's been a little lived in, okay? Just letting you guys know. We get one bed per person on the ground. And actually, this has been slept in, so this one looks a little bit crinkled up, but. And they provide yukata to wear before and after bathing. Beyond the second set of sliding doors are windows framing the view of trees. You can also see the oldest building from up here. The main space has a small monitor, a fan, a water boiler, and a table. Perfect, since I'll be doing some work. The wallpaper shines with golden floral designs. Look how cute it is. If I spread my hand wide, it's almost the length from my pinky to my thumb. Let's pull out the legless chair and try the welcome snacks. In about 15 minutes, we're gonna go to dinner, but I'm curious about what this tastes like. Hmm, what is that in the middle? It looks like a big bean. Mmm. The texture is like a red bean paste. Whatever this is, this looks very dry. Very powdery when you bite into it. Oh, it is so nutty. It is sweet. I feel like there's like a roasted peanut kind of back flavor. Let's get lost again. Unlike the previous corridor, this hallway is brightly lit. The art on the walls give us a short museum experience. This image depicts a battle between humans and giant monsters. The white walls transition into earthy colors as we approach Morinoyu. This public bathhouse has separate pools for men and women. People go nude here, but don't worry, I made sure no one was there before filming. There are two indoor pools with sit-down showers. Yes, your glasses will get steamy. Next door is the open-air bath. I was here earlier and some parts of the pool were noticeably warmer. So walk around to find your ideal temperature. Want to get a break from the heat? Take a stroll through the garden. During the summer, it's abundantly green. A soul-soothing scenery, isn't it? This path leads to private bathhouses. You'll need to book these newer rooms in advance. Oh, there's something growing in the middle of the path. It looks like it's holding a cane, a walking stick. Oh, looks like there's a bridge over there. Let's walk on it. An up and down staircase. Maybe this was once a bridge. For dinner, kaiseki is served, a traditional Japanese multi-course meal, and it's made with seasonal ingredients. There's no English menu, so how do we know what we're eating? Google Translate, I'm putting my faith in you. Live camera translation initiated. Tax company dumpling clear soup, and a complete wife. Actually, set of wives. Translation fail, but hey, there are some successes here. Uh -huh. 
The soup has two strips of carrot and a thick seaweed cut into a fan. A sculptural dishware and the top lifts right off. Pour soy sauce into the second floor. Underneath are ingredients to dip into the sauce. Curiosity builds before each reveal. Sometimes food gets poetic. Why do these drifting leaves make me feel sentimental? No explanation. Emotions happen. Soba noodles served in a cup with a spoonful of wasabi. Sea snails and leafy money bags. Grilled fish. A skinless tomato crowned with lime and mint. Texture is like a silky tofu. So we just entered our private bathhouse. Oh, it's very dark. Oh, we have a little... Oh, waterfall. We're trying to figure out what this is. Is it like a broom? So there's like a shower. Body soap, shampoo, conditioner. So we have this room for 45 minutes and it is 3,000 yen. This is a hot wheel and this is the cold wheel. Look at how thin these towels are. They look like keyboards. Do -do 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 -do. If you enjoy this private bath in the daytime, oh, you will get lots of nice greenery. Might be important for you to know that any guests with tattoos on their body cannot enter the public baths. It's a common rule in Japanese bathhouses as tattoos are associated with the Yakuza. However, if you have a small tattoo, you might be able to cover it up with a band-aid. Tattoos in the private bath is fine, like the one we just went to. 10 minute massage chair for 100 yen. Three, two, one. It's a bunch of air being pushed into my feet. Uh, mission complete. It was actually one of the better massage chairs I've been in. If you're about six feet or taller, please be careful of your head. Doorways can get short, so you'll need to bow or do the limbo. It's sleepy time. The windows have their eyes wide open. Nighty night. The world is in a pandemic, and there are a lot of travel restrictions right now. So I'm at home, social distancing, and snacking a lot. I miss exploring countries abroad and trying new food. So I want to thank Boksu for sending me this box of Japanese treats. Boksu is a monthly snack box subscription service that delivers an assortment of premium Japanese snacks and tea pairings. They also partner with family-run businesses that have been making snacks for over a hundred years. Each purchase helps keep their traditions alive. For first-time customers, Boksu designed the Seasons of Japan box where you can try snacks from all four seasons. For the rest of your subscription, each monthly box has a different theme. Recent themed boxes include Hanami Blossoms, Citrus Tangy, and Rainbow Birthday. It's a gourmet journey through Japan every month. Each box comes with a 20-page culture guide magazine that details each product's origin, flavors, and common allergens. You also get free shipping and tracking from Japan to over 40 countries. Use my code MISSMINA10 to get 10% off your own authentic Japanese snack box from Boksu by using my link in the description box. Shall we crunch on a couple snacks? Now this box is the Seasons of Japan. This one's called Stick Potato and it looks like kind of like a french fries. It's savory, it's gently sweet. It's a little bit tangy, a little bit of a vinegar. There's a very unique undertone. I can't figure it out. I've had potato sticks before, but this is very different. We can refer to their booklet. The sourness comes from umeboshi, the pickled plum, and the earthiness of shiso, perla leaves. The potato sticks are in the spring category. So let's try summer next. This one is seaweed tempura. One side is noticeably seaweed, and the other is tempura, fried. Also very crispy. I've had seaweed many times in my life and tempura many times in my life, but never in this combo with the citric flavor. The sudachi fruit in this, that is actually used to make ponzu sauce. And right, now let's try some fall snacks. 
This is the matcha chocolate stick cake. Most of the stick is soft. Those little chocolate chips give the cake stick more personality. Now let's venture to winter snacks. There's tea, mochi puffs, gudetama, and more. They break apart very easily. The potato sticks we had, that's more of a hard crispiness and very concentrated. But these puffs, they are crispy but very light and airy. And you don't even need to use your teeth. It's kind of like that moment when you step your foot into fresh snow and it just whoosh. There's a lot more snacks to go through. I could probably make a 20 minute video just out of trying all these. And now, back to Seki Zenkan. The next morning, we have our final breakfast. Soon, we shall return to Tokyo, then fly back to the States. I'm gonna check out the bathhouse in the third floor. Right now, this is vacant. Since we're gonna go in, we're gonna say occupied. The entrance room provides a cubby for your belongings. This family-friendly bathhouse is in the Sanso building and can be locked from the inside. Remember to wash before bathing. Might look old, but smells fine and surfaces feel clean. So this is a private bath as well, but it's not as new as the one we went to last night. The camera goes in for a dive. Submerged tiles resemble guitar picks and even Vicks cough drops. Little drops have collected on the ceiling and every once in a while, they start falling on you. Are we gonna go to the other bath? The Iwaburo bathhouse is mixed gender and also has a locker space. So this particular bathhouse is uh, very different because certain times in the morning, only women can come in and in the evening, only men can come in. But right now, men and women can come in. If you don't mind getting naked with your parents, your brothers and sisters, then you can come to this one too. Let me know in the comment section if you would get naked with all your family members and go bathing. This is the woman's entrance and the men's entrance. There's a shower area here, just for one person at a time. So we thought that checkout time was at 12. However, checkout is at 11 and it is 11.25. So we're in a rush right now to pack. When you guys visit Seki Zenkan, I highly recommend you pack as light as possible. They have lockers in Tokyo, so if you have too much stuff, just uh, leave it there. There weren't any taxis available, so we take the bus to Nakajono Station. We've got some time before the bus arrives. Let's stroll around the neighborhood. Is it usually this quiet around here? I like quiet, so I'm not complaining at all. Wow, look at that spider web! Can you see that? Oh. <laughs> wow, they didn't sweep it up. So nice to the spider. Is that for drinking? Wow, so beautiful. What is this? It's very dry. Beer can. Aesthetic manhole cover. This store sells beans and some confectionaries. Postcard. Mm -hmm. Post it's a postcard with a bunch of Wi Fi symbols. Look at cats and cats. Oh, frogs and frogs. Chopstick holders. A cheese grater. Looks beautiful, but might be a challenge to clean. The bus ticket from Sekizenkan to Nakajono Station was 930 yen per person. Transporting from Gunma to Tokyo, then to Narita Airport, the passing scenes were a delight to observe. Remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell. For food and travel in Korea, check out my other channel, Sweet and Tasty TV. Toodles, my noodles. So you might be wondering, where can you get lunch around here? Yesterday, we went to a cozy restaurant called Ichiriki Sushi within walking distance. Remember to take your shoes off before stepping on the tatami mat. 
There's a gentleman working behind the counter and I'm guessing his wife is the waitress. So this is course C, this is course A. If you see the menu, they had a lean tuna, medium fatty tuna, and then fattest tuna. And this here, ladies and gentlemen, is the fattest tuna. That's butter. Just melt. We are recommended to use your fingers. Looks like a heart. You know, this place feels very mom and pop. And when you walk by it, you wouldn't really realize how tasty it is here and how they have good sushi here. Altogether, that meal was about 4,200 yen. That's a little shy of $40 US. This is a bit more on the countryside. Not a lot of foreigners, not a lot of people in general, it seems like. Oh, these flowers are pretty. Let's try one more together. This one's the white strawberry from the spring category. It's a freeze-dried strawberry. After the water was removed, it was infused with white chocolate. Inside and out, it looks like a strawberry. It sure tastes like white chocolate with those CD bits. Here's another snack from the fall category. Can you tell? It's got a lot of black sesame seeds. The almonds and sesame are roasted, then mixed by hand with the mizuami over heat. Mizuami is sugar syrup. These are hand-pressed discs. Tastes so nutty. They say one drum provides you with a full day's worth of sesame. Yeah, I think so. I love how they provide this informative booklet. They tell you which prefecture the snacks are made, so I'm getting ideas on where I could film next and what kinds of foods to watch out for in these different areas of Japan. Remember to use the link in the description box and use my code MISSMINA10 to get a discount on your Boksu box. Thanks again to Boksu for sponsoring this video.